Hello, my name is Kathy Curtis and this is a presentation by the Quebec Anglophone Heritage Network. I'm standing in Stansett County in the eastern townships of Quebec. Stansett County was mostly settled by Americans coming from Massachusetts and Vermont, with a majority coming from New Hampshire, and a scattering of people coming from Great Britain, Scotland and Ireland. They settled here in the late 1700s and many of the early settlers came to clear the land for farming. At the time, the county was mostly forest, but with the promise of rich soil for farming, a vast majority of it was cleared. Also with many sources of water and being so close to the border with us was an added bonus. The first settlers with names such as Cass, Manser, Curtis, Smith, Morrow, Heath to name a few, and they are all listed on the Pioneer Monument located near Dufferin Heights in Stansted East, near the Dufferin Heights Golf Club. The villages of Stansted County include Stansted, Rock Island, Beebe, Ericscliff, Dixville, and Ways Mills, to name a few. I'm going to tell you about one of our interesting citizens of Stansted County, who left his mark in our history. His name doesn't appear on the Pioneer Monument, but he is, he is one of our legendary characters. Today, we are standing at Lakeview Cemetery in Baldwin's Mills. It's about 10 kilometers south of Coaticook and on the Vermont border. This is the final resting place of Big Jack Garland, a legend in Stansted County still to this day. Let me tell you his story. Walter James Garland was born in Northamptonshire, England in 1861. He was the son of Walter Garland and Susan Blaine. Part of the legend of Big Jack begins with Jack supposedly being a veteran of the Boer War in South Africa, but I could not find any records to back up this theory, so I think this is part of the legend as well. Another part of his legend was that he was part of an aristocratic family, but according to his cousin, Anne Lewis, nothing could be further from the truth. In the 1881 census, he is listed as a grainer in Chelsea, England at the age of 19. That is a person who works with wood. Jack Garland arrived in Canada on September 30th, 1898, aboard the ship Parisian in Quebec City, before making his way to the Stansted area. Why did Jack come to Stansted? To farm for business opportunities? The reason why Jack immigrated to Canada is a large part of the legend. He was accused of murdering a rival suitor of his fiancée at the time. So his mother, Susan Blaine, sent him to Canada to avoid justice. And according to the story told, she often sent him money through the Christ Church in Stansted. By now I'm sure you're wondering why the nickname Big Jack. Well, he was a very large man according to legend, anywhere from six foot five to seven feet tall, and depending on whose account you go by. He was known to carry 300 pounds of grain on his shoulders with ease. Jack did mostly lumber work and odd jobs he picked up along the way, including being a farmhand according to the 1911 census. I suppose Big Jack sounded a bit better than Big Walter, but I'm thinking it was probably because he was a lumberjack. Jack married Jenny Stearns of Holland, Vermont on June 19, 1901. Now Holland is just over the border from here in Baldwin's Mills. Records show that Jack brought Jenny back to Stansted County soon after they married and settled in Barnston, a few kilometers down the road from here. At the time of the marriage, Jenny was 26 and Jack was 40, an age difference of 14 years. This could explain a few things further down in our story. There were five children born to the Garlands, Henry, Joseph, Margaret, David, and Matilda. The census has the family living in various areas around Stansted, I suppose where Jack could find work. Unfortunately, at some point, the marriage broke up. From hearsay, Jenny was tired of Jack's wandering ways. I'm not sure if Jack was a ladies' man or just liked the lifestyle of being free. I suppose it must have been a hard life if Jack didn't have steady work with five children to feed. From the census, we know that their breakup happened sometime after 1921. I could not find evidence of a divorce, so I'm thinking it was just a separation. Jenny was tired of living that way. After the end of his family life, Jack was known to become a hermit, mostly alone and wandering the roads of the area, hitching a ride where he could. Jack was living the hippie free lifestyle before it became popular. No worries, no responsibilities, Stance's first hippie. Jack was known to be mostly barefoot in the summer, with his long dark beard and hat and grubby clothing. I guess bathing was not needed when you lived alone. Many stories have been told of Big Jack, but one in particular appeared in the Stansted Journal. Jack was walking home from Stansted one very hot July afternoon and passed Crystal Lake Cemetery. The cemetery has a rather large vault and would be very cool and inviting on a hot day. Jack decided to take a nap inside. Who would do that? 
I cannot imagine being that hot to take a nap in a cemetery vault. Meanwhile, a family decided to stop for a picnic on the vast green grass, spreading a blanket out and getting ready for a cool meal in the shade. Jack, hearing the laughter and the voices, decided to check it out. Coming out of the vault, all seven feet tall of him, stretching and yawning was a sight, I am sure. The family was shocked and startled by the figure walking out of the cemetery vault and apparently did not take very long to pack up and leave. Now, poor Jack, of course, lived alone in a shack between Baldwin's Mills and Stansted in an area called New Boston. Jack was known to go to Stansted and buy bags of grain and flour and just leave it open and eat from it when he was hungry, sharing it with all the mice and vermin that also shared his cabin. One cold February morning in 1936, Walter Wood, a neighbor, was walking by and decided to check in on Jack. He found him lying on the floor very ill. After managing to get him into bed, he called for a doctor, but it was too late. Jack had passed away from either blood poisoning or gangrene to his leg in his 75th year. Jack was laid to rest back in the vault at Crystal Lake until spring, and then he was laid to rest here at Lakeview Cemetery in Baldwin's Mills. Unfortunately, the stone has the wrong death date. According to his death records, Jack passed away February 18, 1936. A good Samaritan that donated the stone did not have access to the information and probably went by local hearsay. Now you might be wondering what happened to Jenny. According to census records, Jenny lived with their youngest son David in Boynton, Quebec, near Ayrescliff. Jenny passed away November 2, 1948, and was laid to rest here beside Jack. They parted in life, but are together in death. Why did I pick the story of Big Jack Garland? I grew up here in Baldwin's Mills, and my dad would always tell me when I was afraid during a thunderstorm that it was just Big Jack rolling rocks down the pinnacle. I always wondered, who was this big man? When I began working as the archivist in the archives of the Stancy Historical Society and began scanning photos, I came across a few photos of a man named Big Jack. There he was in all his glory. Another question, now why was he in J.J. Parker's photo studio in Derby Line, Vermont? J.J. Parker was a prominent and well-known photographer for people on both sides of the border and took photos of many families and events. Thankfully, he did take the time to take Big Jack's photo. Jack may not have been prominent, but a very interesting part of our history. Acid in an area called New Boston. Jack was known to go to town and buy large bags. <laughs> I almost ate that one. <laughs> Clouds. <laughs> oh, Jack, don't play tricks on us. <laughs> <laughs>